Good morning and welcome to the May 15th Committee of the Whole. Before we begin today, I'd just like to remind everyone about the It's Your City open house this Wednesday, May 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the community park. Activities will interest residents of all ages with demonstrations, displays, kids' activities, cool equipment, and of course, a chance to explore and ask questions about our staff. Parksville Fire Rescue, members of the Oceanside Detachment RCMP, Emergency Management Oceanside, and other community organizations will be there with displays ready to answer your questions. In addition, the city is excited to host four events at the Memorial Plaza in partnership with the Parksville Downtown Business Association called Dance With Me at Memorial. The first event on May 25th from 4 to 7 p.m. will feature line dancing. There will be music, dance, instruction, food trucks, and a kid's corner with activities for the little people as well. The Dance With Me at Memorial events will continue in June, July, and August. We look forward to seeing as many of our public there uh, at this amazing events uh, to let you uh, fully appreciate uh, all the activities in our city and uh, the many benefits of living in Parksville. So welcome everyone to attend these events. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll begin with our community of the whole meeting today. Uh, we have uh, to start off our community hall. We have a report from Mrs. Kaler, our CAO. Could you please give us a background on the issue regarding the council strategic plan 2023 to 2026 to seek the endorsement of council's draft strategic plan. Mrs. Kaler. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hopefully, Councillor Beale can hear okay. Just do a quick check on the microphone. Okay, great. Uh, so thanks so much. You'll be seeing a lot of me throughout this Committee of the Whole, so hopefully that's okay. Um, so Council has met um, on several occasions to discuss its strategic plan for this term. It, it is quite common, I would suggest, for councils to amend or adopt a brand new strategic plan for their term. And in this case, we had assistance from an external consultant, um, Mr. Carruthers, who uh, led a workshop with council in person um, over several days and then touched base with council uh, virtually to discuss the draft. Uh, staff also participated in, in the process, and uh, I would suggest there were many similarities in terms of the priorities identified. And so for um, those who were maybe less familiar with strategic planning, uh, basically the strategic plan is council's plan for the four years that you're in office, and it should really be used to guide everything that we do as a city. And items that are identified in the strategic plan should have a correlating item in the budget, um, and also in other plans that might be endorsed or adopted throughout your term. And it would be the, the key strategic piece of information that residents and stakeholders would look to in terms of understanding what council's priorities are. Uh, so as mentioned, an important part, I, I believe the consultant discussed this quite extensively, an important part of your strategic plan is also what is not included in that plan. And so this is where the, the challenging part for a lot of elected officials, I think, comes into play in that we do have obviously a limited budget, limited time, and um, limited staff resources. And so sometimes tough decisions do have to be made. Um, and I think for elected officials, it, it's, it should be helpful to have um, some of those items identified through your strategic planning process so that you can communicate that to stakeholders or residents that uh, are seeking council support for particular projects. Um, and also for council themselves, they should look to the strategic plan when advancing new ideas um, or providing direction to staff. And it is possible, obviously, for a strategic plan to be a living document and, and to be amended over time. But if we're seeing a lot of things come forward in terms of motions from council that are not reflected in the strategic plan, then we probably need to revisit uh, those priorities. One of the things that we talked about in the, the workshops was the importance of sequencing priority items so that um, information gathered at various stages feeds into some of the priorities that you as a council wished to do later on. Um, and I think uh, just from a staff perspective, we can see 
a fairly clear pathway with some of the items um, that we have discussed. So for example, council has already approved some um, extensive water planning projects and the information that we gather from that would be very useful inputs into the OCP review, um, which also then would inform some of the items council has identified with respect to downtown vibrancy and vehicle management and active transportation, especially in the core. And so just in, in final closing uh, today, what we're expecting council to talk about is just endorsing the key themes. So council has six themes identified in this plan and I'll just list them in no order of priority, but uh, the first item is advocacy. And we believe council would expect to see um, metrics and targets established for very important community items that are perhaps not directly within council's jurisdiction. Um, and we would be supporting council by conducting research and um, perhaps seeing delegations from certain groups and sharing community information on items that council is more of an influence on rather than a direct controller of. We also believe that council wishes to update and review the official community plan. And that would be a key major project, obviously led by the planning department, but involving all of our departments. Um, and that is, um, something that we would do on a fairly regular basis, but council has identified this one as a key priority for your term. Uh, vibrancy in the downtown core, I think always an important thing. And um, we have obviously work very closely with the Downtown Business Association um, on several projects. As the mayor mentioned today, we're already uh, looking for some very exciting projects to take place in Memorial this summer. Um, and that project or would be a number of projects, I guess, uh, in terms of doing some uh, problem definition or um, idea scoping in terms of what actions the city could take to increase and enhance the vibrancy of our downtown. Uh, the water use plan, as I mentioned, has already been approved by council and that will involve um, extensive work with um, what we call qualified professionals who are external to the city as well as our operations department um, and also needing assistance from engineering and most likely finance and planning as well. Um, and that would be, or that project will be a comprehensive review of all of the city's drinking water systems, so not just the ERWS. And then community engagement has been identified as an ongoing um, important priority. It does currently uh, show up in our official community plan and many of our other uh, procedural elements, but I think after COVID, uh, this council has identified a, a really strong wish to re-engage with our residents and just get back out and seeing each other in person, hopefully without masks, um, and just having that uh, less formal conversation and ability for people to check in with counselors uh, throughout their term. And then the last item, but again, not in priority, is investing in recreation amenities. Um, I think again, during COVID, we saw the importance of uh, city amenities and recreation options for, for people. Um, a lot of city uh, recreation things are, are not, um, there no additional cost for those items. And so the council has already committed, uh, this council has already committed investing up to a million dollars in a new community track at Oceanside, um, for Oceanside at Bellinas Secondary School, and has also um, endorsed moving forward with uh, plans to look for new aquatic resources and amenities in the region as well. Um, and then the five-year plan already includes significant investments in Parksville Community Park, some of which are underway already this, uh, this season. Um, a new pedestrian connection from Parksville Community Park to Rath Trevor, and several other investments in ecologically sensitive areas, uh, some of which are being funded from DCCs, uh, some through grants, and others uh, directly through um, council budgeting. So um, what we're looking for today is council to endorse um, this at the committee level and make recommendations to the council meeting, which will be happening later today. And if everything goes according to plan, you will have a formalized strategic plan after today's meetings. So are there any questions for CAO Kaler before we go? Councilor Gord. Thank you, Mayor. It's more of a comment, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, first of all, I wanna start uh, by saying a few words about the ongoing opioid and mental health crisis and its impact on the families, our friends and colleagues. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to them that are affected and all the communities and governments that are grappling with the effects of these, this issue. So this being an important advocacy for this council, I really want to thank 
the council members to taking this on as our strategic priority and the staff like being, being there for us and providing all the important resources, skills, knowledge that you bring. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, we'll bring it. <laughs> I didn't see anybody up there. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Beal. Okay. Go um, ahead. Good morning, everyone. And um, it's nice to be here, however, virtually. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to uh, thank our CAO for presenting that very well, um, that overview and a little bit of background. I also appreciated hearing that the, uh, the advocacy bit would include a variety of topics, and I just wonder if it's worthwhile mentioning what some of those topics might be, because I would like to be very clear that in my mind, for instance, advocacy, uh, as mentioned, there's the looking at addiction and mental health, but advocacy for me would also mean us working towards um, getting more doctors for in our area, as that's a huge concern for many people, and also ongoing issues with uh, housing. And in particular, what I heard from people time and time again, is the cost of housing, so non-market housing, and of course addressing the shelter situation. So I just bring those up because I, I um, hope uh, that it's agreed with all of us that advocacy does mean more than one particular aspect. And I worry as well, I heard at one time, you know, that perhaps people might think that we're not concerned about housing if they look at this strategic plan. But in my mind, advocacy would very much include the possibility of working towards housing, working with BC Housing, working with other groups that may come forward. So um, I'd like to make that point and I would like to hear from others if that's also their understanding of what advocacy uh, could include. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Beale. Councillor Grants. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'd very much also like to, uh, through you to the staff, uh, send thanks on behalf of Council for the work done uh, both uh, by the uh, Brian Carruthers and uh, the staff uh, in the workshops were very uh, helpful and I think useful exercise for all of us. So I really appreciate that. Uh, with regard to Councillor Beale's um, request to hear from the rest of Council, I will oblige. Uh, I very much agree that advocacy is uh, in recognition of the fact that at Council, at the municipal level, we do get a lot of uh, community concerns around issues that aren't really in our jurisdiction. And so we saw advocacy as an opportunity to, you know, putting that in the strategic plan as an opportunity to do what we can uh, both at the political and at the staff level to engage with other levels of government, but also with our partners across the region. Uh, so when we look at the interlocking uh, opportunities for interlocking these issues, for example, housing, uh, which calls into question how we do our land use policies, but also brings in federal and provincial uh, partnership opportunities. Uh, so that would be one of them. Also addictions and mental health challenges that we see in the community as uh, Councillor Gore raised uh, this morning. These are all related to our advocacy role uh, and our advocacy goals. Uh, I would also add that even when it comes to our strategic priority of uh, increased recreational uh, facilities and opportunities that working with our partners uh, regionally is a key aspect of that. And uh, so advocacy and the community engagement piece in our strategic plan are meant to address um, the how these all interrelate and interlock so that we definitely want to be working with others as much as we can to get uh, things done for people in our community and uh, beyond. So those would be my additional comments to what Councillor Beale raised. Thank you. Councillor Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Through yourself to uh, staff, thank you very much for helping put this together. And thank you out to, uh, goes out to Brian Carruthers as well. 
um, while we're on the advocacy thing. Uh, I think it's a, a huge, a huge item on here that, um, that I look forward to, you know, helping where I can, uh, being a new counselor, you immediately find yourself, uh, say the snow flies and we're looking for, uh, you know, emergency shelter for people and are, it's filling our inbox. That was kind of the first thing that I've quickly found out that is not really in the lane of, uh, municipal government. Um, so when it comes to uh, shelters, be it temporary or emergency shelters, uh, the need for more doctors, uh, non-market housing, um, and you know, working with Island Health and seeing uh, what they see for our area here in Oceanside or specifically in Parksville, working with the RDN, working with uh, MLAs uh, down in uh, Victoria, and uh, maybe occasionally even working with our, our federal representatives um, because a lot of times there are grants, there are help that we can get there, there is advice we can get there, there are things that they might want to see happen in our area, and the more that we can be uh, building relationships with uh, those channels, I think it can really benefit the city of Parksville. So um, this is a really big one for me because as a municipal uh, elected official, we we kind of have a limited amount of means for uh, for for funds, for budgets, and also what is kind of in our wheelhouse. And so uh, if we can be effective as a tool um, with the other levels of government um, and agencies, I think that uh, really pays off well for the, the city of Parksville. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that, thank you. Thank you, you covered off a lot of very excellent points for advocacy. Uh, I would just maybe add to one or two anyways that. Um, haven't been mentioned yet. And I feel that advocacy is also for us to um, advocate for the environment, advocate for the environment, and it can be in the form of habitat restoration of uh, existing uh, lands in, in our area within the uh, encompass of the city of Parksville. I think it's very important that we take um, some pride and stewardship in uh, um, advocating for our environment and also advocating for climate action and initiatives that is also going to better our, our carbon output um, here um, in the uh, lovely city of Parksville. And I believe that it's up to us uh, at our level to advocate for um, positions or policies that's going to further the goals of trying to get to net zero. So I, all good ideas or advocacy, putting it together, I think um, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot to do for the next three and a half years. Any further questions or comments? I'd like to ask for a move and a seconder for the following recommendations. Uh, one being that the report from the Chief Administration Officer dated April 17th, 2023, entitled Council Strategic Plan 2023-2026 be received. And part two, the Council endorsed the attached 2023 to 2026 Strategic Plan for its term ending October 26th. I have a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Grins. Seconded by Councillor Gorn. Any discussion? Yes, carry on. Councillor Gorn. Thank you, Mayor. Through to through you to our CAO. <clears throat> so, Ms. Kaler, we see that the, the cost for this is about fifty thousand dollars is budgeted, but you're saying there's anticipated cost will be about half this amount. Uh, can you uh, explain it to, for the public, like uh, what this cost will be towards and uh, why did we budget this much money and now we're doing a very fiscally responsible thing by uh, cutting the cost to half? Thank you. Um, if I may, through the mayor. Uh, so part of the reason why it was a little bit less is that council, I would say more quickly than perhaps expected, got to a consensus on these items. So the budget included options for additional meetings with the consultant. Um, in the it kind of varies, but in the past, there's been, um, you know, additional weekend meetings, a uh, couple of days, which tend to cost um, more money. <laughs> and so in this case, council only needed to meet with the facilitator once in person, and then once in that uh, virtual meeting. And so that significantly reduced the costs from the, the budget. We also went to RFP on this, um, our request for quotes, I guess. Um, and so some of the options came in at lower than what was expected. Um, and also, I think the um, consultant that we chose um, was kind enough, I guess, or, or um, coordinated this with some of the other things he was doing on the island. So we were able to share costs. Um, 
the, the money that we are spending for the consultant also includes a publication of various documents after the fact. So um, there'll be some things to assist counsel, um, kind of, uh, I think he discussed not a cheat sheet per se, but a, a checklist of items that would help you with future decision making, and then other promotional materials. Um, not a very high budget for that, but it's it just would look nicer than if we were to print it uh, in-house. Um, and that's something that's coordinated through our communications department so that it meets all of our standards. Um, and yeah, really it is just, um, you know, we, you don't always know what the amount is going to be, but when we went to market, it was a little bit less, but also because you were so efficient in meeting and getting through a lot in those uh, first initial days, we didn't need to have a, an additional meeting. So. Carry on. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the reason I brought this up, you know, like when the council approved 6.8% tax increase, there was so much talk that perhaps this council did not spend enough time deliberating or discussing uh, the, the budget or the financial uh, plan. But I just want to stress how much time we did spend actually, and the staff was so prudent in, in giving us a very, very uh, responsible uh, and very efficient budget that, uh, so I just want to assure the people that we did really spend a lot of time. We are very wise and very prudent with your money, how we are spending it. And again, another um, word of thanks to our staff for, for, for this. Thank you. Any further comments? Councillor Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Just a question through yourself to our CAO. If we did want to amend just tiny little verbiage and not to get into wordsmithing, but can that happen at a later date and we can accept it today? Or what's the process that you'd like to see? Thank you. Uh, if I may, through the mayor. So we would actually require some direction um, on that at some point. So it could be during the council meeting. Um, so essentially what we're doing today in the committee is making recommendations to the council meeting. So in committee, when you approve something, we do a rise and report and that goes to council. Um, so there's two opportunities. It could either be in this meeting that if there's items missing, um, that they be identified, um, or it, when you're adopting it finally at the council meeting, you would need to do it at that point. Um, however, as I said, there, there are opportunities, like what our intent and what we've done in the past is kind of bring the strategic plan forward for review and updating kind of once a year. So next year, what we'll see with our budget process is we'll be asking council to kind of re-endorse or reconfirm the priorities. And then if we see a lot of things coming forward in the budget that aren't accounted for anywhere, um, that would be an opportunity to perhaps amend, like either, you know, take something out or put something else in that's that's not there. So um, it is intended to be a living document. So at a future date, say several months down the line, if you notice that something's not reflected correctly or the wording is misleading or there's issues with it, we can take um, resolutions on it at any time. Well, carry on. Thank you, Mayor. Just to follow up, um, just listening to everyone's comments today, there might be a few things that just aren't mentioned in, say, the the why under advocacy, but um, I, I don't feel like it's urgent and we don't necessarily need to do it right now. Um, instead of, say, affordable housing, which that term is thrown around a lot, I mean, we'd be specifically uh, speaking to other agencies about non-market housing, which is something that you know, developers don't necessarily do on their own without having other agencies involved um, and, uh, you know, attracting or or sorting out with, say, uh, Island Health, how we can uh, get more uh, physicians, GPs to our area. Um, we do speak to mental health and addictions and health care. It just it could be uh, maybe a little bit more specific in the verbiage. Um, you know, we, whether or not we do that in this meeting or another, those are just kind of the thoughts after I heard everyone's comments today. Thank you. If I may. Yeah, if I may sir, sir, CAO Taylor. Thank you. Uh, through the mayor, one of the things that I would maybe suggest in, in this instance, though, is that um, we do want the strategic plan to be somewhat high level and not as detailed so that it might um, prevent council from moving forward. But one of the things that, that this council could do is when you're adopting resolutions, um, you would specifically kind of spell out, um, you know, I believe this would support our goal of advocacy in the following way, or maybe it also supports um, a recreation goal or some of the other goals. And so um, maybe what we could probably do is just work with it for a short period of time and then see if it's causing confusion or, or making it difficult for you to move things forward. Um, but one of the items that we would likely, or 
a list of items that we would likely see out of this is this large project list that we have. And in the past, we actually have the strategic goal identified in the second column. We took them off for this because obviously there's a new strategic plan. Um, and what I would sort of caution council on is if you see a lot of items that don't have that list or that connection, that's when we want to maybe look at the plan again and make sure that it's still, um, you know, sort of ground truth it a little bit and make sure it's still reflecting on what you're moving forward as a council. Um, but certainly if, if we find that the wording isn't um, capturing things, then we can definitely open it up. And um, one of the other things we could probably do too in terms of our communication strategy is provide a little bit more explanation almost as examples of what council would be looking at for those uh, particular items. Because we did, as council will remember, I have all those in my office with the specific kind of projects that you would see council making a motion on. And so we can certainly start uh, communicating those as part of our our rollout of this. Councillor Grants. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question through to our CAO as well to follow up on Councillor Wood. Uh, in terms of the uh, execution of the strategic plan, uh, are there any practical steps we can take to ensure that uh, council initiatives and motions kind of go through a, a filter of how they align with the strategic strategic plan? You know, more easy easy to say a word than strategic plan. <laughs> Thanks, if I may, uh, through the through the mayor. So we'll kind of be getting into that with the next item, uh, which is the work plan. And um, I will try to be as diplomatic as possible when I talk about some of those um, sort of discipline things around making motions. Um, obviously, things come up and, you know, as elected officials, it's fully within your prerogative to, to move things forward. But what we would recommend in terms of best practices is that um, before councillors bring something forward, to this table for discussion or to your council table for discussion, um, you as an individual would look at what strategic objective you believe the item is, is moving forward or supporting. Um, and you try before it even comes to the table to, to um, evaluate that in your mind. Um, and what we recommend or what Brian, I guess, and others in this area would recommend is that if you have three or four items that residents have brought to you or that you have you sort of identified for yourself, if you look at them and say, okay, well, these ones don't really clearly link to my strategic plan, but this one links to three things on the strategic plan, then you would prioritize that yourself before you bring it forward to council. Um, and then the other piece of it, I guess, is, is knowing that you have multiple years of a term. And so, um, you know, deciding what's the most important thing at the earlier parts of your term um, and what you would be, I, I think it was impressive to hear this council talk about setting up the next council for success. And so what would you be, um, you know, building a foundation for, for future years? Because I can understand um, for elected officials, it's like, you feel like you might have to get everything done kind of all at once, but, um, you know, knowing that there's things that are achievable within a certain time frame, And, and I think already this council is, has been quite good at identifying the, the dominoes as I think you've referred to them where one thing will filter and lead into another. Um, so really the only way that we can kind of stay on track with the strategic plan is through the items that get approved at the council table. Um, obviously emergency things come up. I don't think any of us had a strategic objective of fighting COVID, but um, you know, having a clear kind of understanding of, of what you're adopting right now, um, if there are things on the strategic plan that you absolutely don't see moving motions forward or you don't want to support financially um, through the budget, then they probably shouldn't be on here. So that's kind of these this is the first part of the tough decisions of what makes the list. Um, and then after that, if you know obviously if things are are going a certain way um, and a priority, you know, all lands on one thing, then you can amend the list later if you think you need to. So so then I uh... Yeah, I have a question as well for the CAO then. Um, I um, was trying not to get lost down into the details, you know, but we are, you know, uh, for the advocacy anyways, we're, we're, we're fine tuning it, which is a, it's a good position to be in. Um, but I guess uh, some of the other things that were on the strategic plan um, went, were not, not listed. And I'm, I, I have to say, but I, I thought we were just generally talking about the strategic plan at this point because there was not listed here the downtown vibrancy. Yeah, did, did you mention it here? If I may. Oh, okay, um, in yeah. the, in I the... wasn't following, I was too big. 
Yeah, okay. um, that is definitely in there. That is, um, um, and it's in the, the draft plan right. um, as the uh, number four, no, uh, number three priority. Not Again, not in order of importance. But. Yeah, okay, that, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. I was just I was following as you, you were talking and I wasn't sure. I'm good with that. Thank you. And any further questions? All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Mrs. Kaler, if you would give us a report on the, uh, or uh, give us a background first on the issue regarding our corporate work plan. To review the corporate work plan and confirm council priorities following adoption of the 2023-2027 strategic plan. Mrs. Kaler. Thank you. Um, so staff are just going to help out putting my PowerPoint on the screen here. So this is a bit familiar, I think, to most of you. It's um, an updated PowerPoint from the first discussions we had on the, the work plan in November. Um, and all of the councillors have a hard copy. I know some folks like to make notes. Um, and so we'll be trying to work from that as well today. So I'll just run through the presentation um, for those uh, in the audience or at home. I think it's only staff in the audience, but um, just to understand what we will be talking about here today. So as we mentioned previously, we had a, a consultant assist the previous council um, in terms of applying your strategic, their strategic plan to the work plan and the budget that they had um, identified for staff. So what is before you is estimates on staff time and the ability to complete tasks that are not operational in nature. So we do not include things on here, like there's nothing on here for um, finance to prepare the budget, because that happens every year. It's operational. It's something we do regardless of who is sitting around the council table. And so that, that's kind of a good way to think about it is um, if no council decisions are being made, what do we do anyway? Um, so, so those things are not on these lists. Uh, what we try to put on here are projects that are kind of a one-off. So there are some operational projects that staff have put forward, like um, if legislation changes and we need to do new accounting uh, standards or, or things like that. But for the most part, these are items that have come from council direction um, and are projects that are council driven, um, even though some of them would probably have been initially a staff uh, suggestion, but they are not something we would be doing without council support. Uh, so what has happened over the years is that we've had some of the operational things that council or that staff have said would be nice to do for efficiency or for best practices, you know, like the boring stuff like upgrading some of our policies. Those things have really been pushed off quite often over the last sort of seven, eight years because we've had so many council projects that we just aren't able to get to some of those. So we've talked a little bit about that. Um, also, previous councils have held taxation levels. I would suggest artificially low, I guess. Um, I don't want that to be a loaded term, but like really they've um, looked at that as a very key priority, given that residents, I think, are very sensitive to tax increases in our community. But that has really resulted in some things not being done in terms of um, infrastructure investment or maintenance or recycle, recycle, uh, cycle replacements. Um, and we had held staffing very constant for many, many years. And so um, that has been a key priority of previous councils. I would suggest maybe not so much with this one. I think there's already been some recognition of things that need to, to happen. Um, and we are doing those condition assessments um, for some of our infrastructure uh, this year. So um, we talked as well about best practices. And so kind of touching a little bit on what Councillor Grenz was saying, Normally what would happen is the work plan would be established um, at the beginning of the year. And sometimes we would even expect to see kind of multi-year things that you know projects would have maybe two, three years to them. Like I would suggest probably uh, the OCP review or the water studies that we're doing, we're not gonna be able to do them in one year. So normally the work plan, if you look kind of two, three, three years out would have um, sequenced projects identified. What we wouldn't normally expect to see is that plan changing dramatically throughout the year. So next year, what we'll do is we'll, during provisional budgeting in the fall, we would bring a work plan to council early in the year, usually January, and we would expect it to be fairly static for the rest of that year. Now, there are, of course, things that come up um, that we would have to um, adjust and put in there. But normally, we plan our year on 
what we think is going to be in the budget and what we think is going to be on the list. And so that's where I think we've kind of gotten off uh, track a little bit with previous councils is that things have just been added and added and added um, without any um, kind of switching of the properties. And so our capacity remains fixed. Um, we've already quite often planned out and started projects earlier in the year. And so even if we stop them and move on to something else, it does create some cross-departmental implications. Um, and so what we had sort of talked about was that, you know, it's kind of this well-oiled machine where every department kind of works together and we feed off each other in terms of priorities and, and where um, we have multi-departmental projects. If one department kind of stops or changes course, then it does have a trickle-down effect. And so we would prefer to see a somewhat stable work plan at the beginning of each year, hopefully even for an 18 month or two year period, um, although that isn't always possible. Um, so right now, when we started the year, so council will see on your big list here, um, and it looks bigger because I printed it so you could actually read it. Um, but section A, which is starting on page two, is really kind of what we started the year out with. And there was 23 projects identified there. And the very first page had 12 projects that we were still working on at the sort of first quarter of 2023. All, those are almost all done. The first page, we have about 100 hours worth of stuff left. And for all intents and purposes, they're pretty much done. So section A has a number of projects that um, we can't really stop doing now without some implications. But there are some that we're that you'll see later on in the presentation that staff are recommending that we defer. And there are some that we recommend be deleted. And then in the next uh, section, section B, I, I think there's a couple of things, well, a few things that council will probably want to delete. So we're trying to be quite neutral on those ones just because they are council direction and they're not really, staff um, doesn't really kind of have a position either way, but there are some that we know that we can't get to this year. So we're recommending deferral. So um, we'll go through them in more detail. Also, we're going to review the major capital projects that are underway that we're either fully in the midst of or that we have on our agenda to do. Um, I think I am like a broken record in terms of talking about our staff capacity. Um, and I think some of you now that you've been sitting in this chair a little bit longer, like if every week there's one or two small things from one or two counselors, it very quickly starts eating away at our ability to do things. Um, like for example, one of the things I was thinking about the other day, even a notice of motion that doesn't go anywhere, you'll see I still put some time in there because um, usually I'll help out with somebody writing it or Sarah will. Then we have to you know, circulate back and forth with the, the counselor. Then we talk about it with them. Um, then all of us sit through it at the council meeting. And so I just wanted to reflect, it might not be correct that it's 15 hours, but it's pretty close when you start to think about how many people are involved in even a simple thing like a notice of motion. So that's where, um, to kind of touch on Councillor Grenz's point, we want council to be uh, thinking about what you're putting forward, because even if it doesn't go anywhere in terms of a long-term project, it still takes time. Everything we do has a direct or indirect cost, basically. Um, so that's, and of course, this is still just a little bit of a fallout from COVID, which hopefully we don't have for too much longer. <laughs> Um, but we're definitely seeing some supply chain and delays on some of our projects as a result of that terrible thing. <laughs> um, so for the 2023 work plan, basically we don't have any additional time for new projects. I did highlight some of the things that council has brought in as new projects in blue, and they're mostly kind of on page three because most of them would be, um, you can't see this, but these are mostly organized in uh, terms of departmental. So administration um, is the lead agency on a lot of those council initiatives. So um, that's why they kind of happen to be in sequence. But um, that's the other part of it that I think we have to be cautious about is that we have a certain limited amount of time, but that doesn't cross, like we can't load up one department with all of the projects. So what we've seen in the past is a lot of projects will fall to administration, of course, just given the nature of how closely we work with council and to operations because they tend to be things like in the community parks and um, in our public spaces. And so um, in the past, what we've had is, you know, a lot of overloading of um, the, the capacity in that one department. And um, maybe we might have some additional time in another department, but they don't have the expertise. You can't just switch, like a director of engineering and a director of finance can't necessarily just be the same thing. Um, so that's, we've in the past kind of plugged that gap with some expert temporary expert help. 
um, especially in ERWS and in some of our kind of more technical areas where you can just pull a retired engineer or um, you can hire a consultant to do a, a sort of a term-based project. Um, so also with a new council, there's um, at the beginning part, there's a lot of increased demands on us just getting everybody up to speed and, and working through orientation. And then also, of course, doing our strategic planning. Next year, I think things go, will, you'll probably notice hopefully that things will go a lot smoother and a lot of these sort of operational routine things that we do um, for the first time, it's always a little bit more daunting, I think, for everybody. So, so right now we have 17 exempt staff at the city of Parksville um, and the consultant that we used in the past had some kind of, I would say like um, common metrics in terms of how much time a director in a certain department can spend on additional non-operational tasks. And so it, it varies. And so the first part of this process was to actually go through our list of directors and managers and estimate how much time each of them has for discretionary projects. So the caveat, we end up, it's about 20% on average, but the caveat there is that for someone like the fire chief, they have zero time really, like they're out doing fire chief stuff like all day, every day. Um, realistically, the chief still does still spend time on, on, you know, things like the renovation or strategic planning or acquisition of lands or things like that, or policy, but it's a small percentage. And then we also had special project managers um, term positions. They were 100% dedicated to council discretionary projects. So, so that's just a bit of the caveat, but normally a, a director in Parksville, our directors are what we call working directors. So they don't have the um, you know, ability to just sit back and kind of direct work. They all bring reports to council, re research things, um, you know, prepare grants, all that sort of stuff. So tallying up all of the capacity that we have, it's about as a guideline, 6,000 hours of time that we can put to special council projects. And obviously there's um, you know, a difference around that. It's intended to be a proxy so that we can understand if we see 12,000 hours of time or 18,000 hours of time and we think we only have six, then we know we're just way off in terms of our guessing. I would say if it's like 7,000, we're, we're probably okay. If it's 5,000, we probably could, we'll probably be working on those boring, policy type things um, that council doesn't necessarily want to spend a lot of time on. Um, so we kind of want to be around that number, given that, it, you know, some of its estimates and sometimes like some of these, we try to be very conservative, but we also have thought about some of them, like, like we basically have 70 hours for everything that has to go to council because it has to touch so many people. Um, and we kind of did a few, like on average, this is what we spend on a report or whatever. Um, sometimes it, it might be a bit less, sometimes it's way more, so it kind of evens out. So right now, what we're looking at is, in the past, we felt like we could really accomplish about 40 projects, 40 to 45, depending on how big they are. That's some really big, like two or three major projects, and then several smaller ones. Um, and then we usually would look to have about that 6,000 hours. So what we have right now on our current list is double um, our current capacity. And so you'll see later on, some of my recommendations are that we defer certain things to multi, like to the next year, to 2023 or 2024, if council doesn't want to delete them. And that would ease uh, things like already with, if I, um, I kind of planned, um, like if certain things were deferred, we have about 4,000 hours worth of stuff for 2024, um, which is achievable um, and would give some ability for council to add other things. So I think that's what I would encourage council to think about is, kind of that delete, refine, defer um, as you go through the list. So looking at your strategic priorities, and I know we haven't fully endorsed them yet, um, but I just wanted to touch a little bit for folks, um, maybe I think we've talked a little bit with council about this, but here's kind of what it would look like on our work plan. So for the advocacy piece, we're expecting staff would need to do some research to support council initiatives. Um, we would need to prepare correspondence to various ministers or levels of government or stakeholder groups. Um, and we would probably need to arrange things like um, delegations and meetings with uh, expert folks um, behind the scenes, like maybe on housing or on, um, you know, I already do meet quite regularly with folks from Island Health or I meet with um, the PDBA or like various partners, but I could see this being um, arranging those types of meetings with council um, and just spending a little bit of time on those kind of initiatives. The OCP review will be our major project um, that will involve all departments at various stages, but obviously very heavily on the planning department. And so that impacts the capacity of the planning department to do everything else. 
Um, we will be using external consultants for a lot of that, but everything has to have that touch point of our experts in that department. Um, and so it's really heavily kind of laying um, the work on the planning, communications and admin. And then other departments will kind of come in and out of the process as, as we get through various topics. Uh, the downtown vibrancy, that's, we think a large part of that will be engaging with the businesses, with uh, tourism and business groups, um, with the PDBA, of course, and then also looking at what council's willing to spend. And so if you look at the existing downtown strategy, council has adopted many of those recommendations, but that costs money. So things like nice garbage cans and fancy street lights and banners, and um, we have a graffiti protocol where we prioritize, you know, cleaning the downtown. Those things have a cost. And so we would be expecting council to reflect those in the budget. And then these, these areas are more heavily impactful on operations and engineering. Um, operations does our day-to-day -day, um, assistance down in that area, maintains everything that we have in the public spaces. And then engineering provides a lot of the specs and standards um, when we have developments come in. Uh, the drinking water uh, priorities, the comprehensive planning for that, uh, obviously that involves operations um, and finance and engineering as the supports and heavily relies on the expert consultants. So a lot of um, you know, work on the RFPs and then managing, like sort of project managing those things and working very closely with the ministry um, and making sure we have all the appropriate approvals for um, even sometimes for the research, you need to have um, like approvals to work in and around streams and things of that nature. And then engagement, fairly straightforward. I think that this really heavily involves communications with support from admin. Um, we do already have some clear budget for city hosted events like the um, celebration for Phil St. Luke, for example, or the memorial events. Um, and then we also have ops assist with a lot of those things. So things that happen in community park or a memorial or downtown, um, Craig Street, anywhere like that, we have uh, operations staff usually um, either cleaning garbage cans more often or washing, um, washing the washer, cleaning the washrooms more often um, and just kind of more um, litter picking and stuff like that for those events. And then recreation, the big part of recreation is really the capital cost. Obviously all new recreation infrastructure costs a significant amount of money in upfront. And then there's the life cycle replacement uh, cost there. And then engaging with folks to make sure that what we're buying or putting in is the right thing and that it meets their needs. Um, and there's a lot of sort of competing interests in some areas. Uh, so we wanna make sure that what we're achieving is not uh, you know, detrimental to another group. And then we really, I think this council has been great already. Um, we need to just make sure we have those relationships with the RDN. Um, they're kind of a leader on a lot of the rec stuff in the community. And most of what we do here is really regional just because of where we're located. So um, I think that's a, a positive step forward already um, on some of those things. Okay, and so then just a quick discussion about our capacity. So um, I'll let council read through the details on this. Um, it'll be on, available online, but um, here's kind of what we do. So, you know, mentioning a little bit earlier that we, we have a lot of cross departmental projects, but that doesn't mean that we can just substitute one director for another or one, like everybody has very specific competence um, in their field. And so, um, while engineering, you know, is probably one of the more generic ones that can help out with different things, um, everybody's quite specific in terms of, you know, the skills that they bring and, and quite often they need to touch base with other directors, but they can't necessarily just lead a project that's not within their um, area of expertise. So some of the major things, see some very handsome, uh, handsome folks up here first. So, um, some of the major projects that we are already working on, and we did mention most of these with council before, but right now, obviously we're, we're finishing up the orientation intensity, um, but we do have orientation kind of, you know, throughout the year, but it was a very heavy, I'm sure you all felt it was a, a very heavy uh, load up front when you first come on board. Um, and that does obviously impact our time for certain departments to do additional things. Um, we have a new washroom building. Um, and a lot of uh, accessibility and connectivity items on, ongoing right now in the community park, as well as the court upgrades. Um, we are gonna be getting an update, our council will be getting an update very soon on some of the court uh, things moving forward, um, I believe later this month. But if you're down there, you'll see there's work underway and it's quite busy. Um, and we've had a great response. Um, the contractor, I'm not sure if anybody went to meet the machine, but um, we've had some really great feedback on 
just how that group is uh, connecting with our community and, and people are able to kind of see what's going on. We have lots of boards um, with information there that Deb has uh, coordinated and it's been really, I think a lot of excitement. Um, I was even just down in the park last week and heard from a lot of people that they're really excited to see some of the things going in. So um, it's busy for the next little while, but it will be great. Uh, so the gathering space is fully underway. Council has issued the development permit. Um, lots of work kind of behind the scenes first to get us here and, and that will be completed uh, imminently. And that is a grant project mostly, although uh, council did approve some additional support on that one. Uh, the urban forest strategy is well underway. We'll be bringing a report to council shortly on that. And then we are also working on service level. And so I've had a couple of conversations with councillors on what that means. And really that's your expectations of, of everything that we do. So a, new, a few of you have heard me kind of say, well, that's not the level of service that we provide right now. Um, and anytime we increase the level of service in one area, we either have to look at increased resources or decreasing or adjusting the level of service somewhere else in a related area. So this is things like how often we mow, um, how often we collect garbage and the garbage cans that we have in place, uh, maintaining trails and, uh, road ends and things like that. And so that's our level of service, even snow fight, um, everything pretty much that we do has a level of service. And so that's a big fo focus uh, for this council kind of towards the end of this year and into next year, we'll be bringing a lot of items to you. Um, we have lots of work going on with our asset valuation right now. Um, very soon we have a great public event coming up for the wetlands. Um, we've been doing a lot of planning with experts on that um, behind the scenes over the last few months. And we're ready to bring that to council now and to the public for some further discussion. Uh, council has already during the budget process um, indicated that we're still interested in looking and exploring um, opportunities for enhanced aquatic, uh, aquatic options in the region. We have the trans transportation master plan on the books and that's uh, the RFP is almost ready for that one and that's a, a foundational piece that would um, also support council's um, considerations of things um, in the downtown area, traffic management and, and alternative transportation options. We are doing quite a few things on resiliency and climate change. Um, as the mayor mentioned, um, this is where some of the things around environmental targets, um, we're doing some planning for protection of ecologically sensitive areas um, and working with partners on that like MABRI and Aerosmith Biosphere uh, folks and Aerosmith Naturalists and MIVIs. Um, and then also we're looking at preparing for a DCC review that was actually supposed to happen this year, but we've deferred that, um, but we're doing the behind the scenes work on that. Um, the Parksville plan review, that's our OCP's name. Um, it's called Plan Parksville officially in case anyone didn't know that. Um, we're looking at getting this year, the background information to start that and preparing the RFP, um, assuming obviously council uh, doesn't alter the priorities in your plan. We have a community park circulation plan, which we're doing some of the safety and accessibility items now, but there's a broad plan for the entire area um, that would also then integrate into the capital plan, which is looking at everything we have in the community park. What's the life cycle expectations of both structures and playground equipment and um, other things that are being added into the park, courts and things, and then how do we build a long-term plan around that? The Rath Trevor Trail connection is well underway. We're working our way through some of those things. Um, we have talked to the Parksville Lions and they are expecting uh, to have an application ready for us imminently on the workforce housing project that Parksville has given in um, a letter of intent to proceed with that. And that will require um, several processes. So uh, basically needs a, a zoning amendment for sure. Maybe an OCP amendment. We're not 100% sure on that yet till we see the, the proposal and council will be involved at multiple steps throughout that process. We have already started working on the fire department plan as council is aware and several items have come before you for that. And so um, working on all of these projects, some of the things we've identified um, that are perhaps operational in nature, but at risk um, because we don't get a lot of uh, support for them. They're just not very fun, I suppose. Um, are things like our service levels, uh, you know, accounting standards, doing a lot of upgrades to our policies and procedures. Um, and then we have talked a little bit with this group as well about First Nation reconciliation um, and how that requires a dedicated expert resource, um, which I think this council will re revisit uh, probably throughout its term. But right now that's not something that we have a lot of projects associated with. 
So here we are again, um, broken record, I apologize, um, that we do have um, too much on the plate right now. And so there are tough decisions that we will have to make, hopefully as a team, um, in terms of, you know, what is it that council really wants to focus on in terms of getting things done in your term? If we have multiple things just sitting on a list, then we kind of know in advance they're just not going to, not, not one of them is going to get that um, directed focus. And so having a fewer things that are having that direct focus will allow us to achieve more. And one of the things we've talked about with councils over the years is this sort of back to basics idea of the need to have versus the want to haves. And so sometimes there's a balance required so that if council feels like we need to have water resiliency planning, then maybe that means we can't do another massive capital investment or something like um, another stage or something like that. So that's just a random example. But I think it's having council understand, you know, what they want, like what they think we need versus if we could do it, then let's put it on a later year or something. Okay, and then I've kind of said this already, we have to balance what it is we want. We can't just keep adding projects or adding things without um, some kind of refining of the, the current direction. And so council's strategic plan is supposed to provide um, direction to staff on your vision and the priorities or areas of focus. And as we said, in a way, it also kind of gives us the areas that are not your focus for this current uh, budget cycle or, or year. It should support the service levels and the delivery of services that we are able to provide through the budgeting. And it should direct new capital investment so again, if we're seeing things come forward, um, we're spending taxpayer money on items that we can't clearly link to the strategic plan, then we need to look at what needs to be adjusted there. Um, it should also guide the infrastructure renewal and areas of focus. Like for example, if, um, if this council really wanted um, enhanced alternate transportation, then we should see some investment in things like bike lanes and sidewalks and um, other kind of, uh, you know, infrastructure to support that rather than um, doubling the road lanes or something like that, or adding parking. <laughs> um, and then obviously pol policy guidance um, comes to us from your strategic plan. And then the budget should link up to the items on your strategic plan. And so you'll see in the staff report, there's a couple of examples of what projects or budget items might show up on the um, budget. And so the options are, really quite straightforward, I guess, is one, revi revise this work plan to match our capacity. So that would include removing certain things, deferring certain things, um, and not adding new things without kind of having that lens of what am I switching this for? Um, option two is just hire more people. Um, but there's a lot of caveats to that in that it's very hard to hire people. We don't necessarily have space for people. We would have to increase tax taxes. Um, there's, you know, I don't know that that's necessarily a, um, as easy of a solution as it might appear. And then option three, again, this was kind of earlier in the year, we talked about perhaps pausing the addition of new things until your strategic plan was adopted, and then looking at things in a more multi-year focus so that it may still be something that's important to council and you might not want to remove it from the list, but we move it further out in, into your term so that it's not the priority for right now. And then staff have clearer direction on what to work on right now. So this is just a reminder of your strategic priorities that you're discussing. We saw this slide earlier already. And then we're getting into kind of the nitty gritty of this now. So with the list you have in front of you, I've made a few recommendations for council to think about and some sense of what that means for the overall capacity. So um, you'll see I've sectioned these out. So page two is section A. And that is the projects that we kind of started the year out with. And that was about 4,000 hours of projects at the beginning. And there's a little bit of a cheat on the side. There's a blue box for some of the items that um, we're talking about here. And so what staff... CEO yeah. Kaler, if I take the uh, council has like three questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, CEO. Before we jump into the items specific list, um, I was wondering if you could speak about the OCP revision being a strategic priority for the council. But I also understand that OCP was already slated to be reviewed in 2024. So it being a strategic priority now, how does it change the staff resources, budgeting and all those things uh, when it was already scheduled to be done next year? Thanks, if I may, uh, through the mayor. I believe it was scheduled for 2025. 
Um, but I might be wrong there. I don't know. That's my, is it 2025? Yeah. Um, so, it, so basically this council endorsing it as a strategic priority advances time. So it moves it forward in the, in the priority. Um, I would suggest that the workload is about the same. Um, like it's no different moving it forward a year, um, but it, anytime we do an OCP, it just means that the planning department's capacity for other projects is impacted. And also some of our other departments that would be involved in certain sections of the OCP. So things that are related to um, infrastructure. So obviously growth, um, the engineering department would, would be very involved. Um, so normally what you would see is an OCP would be the only major project um, assigned to a, a, a team of our size in a year, in a given year. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to follow up on that if I could as well. Um, the question is, is I recognize what the, the full implementation of a, a full o, OCP review is. I've, I've been there. I've done that. I worked on, um, on the OCP review before, so I know the process. I also know the cost that was involved as well. And I know that there, there's a, a cer certain flavor appetite to bring that forward from when it was actually um, designed to be um, renewed. And it was designed to be renewed in 2025, as I, I get it. But it was, at that point, it, it doesn't mean that you automatically redo a complete new OCP. It would be at 2025, you would review the existing OCP you have and identify um, shortages and flaws and so forth. I'm, 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 what I'm getting at here is I'm not sure what um, some council members hope to achieve by getting an, a complete OCP review without, I think it would be helpful if those council members would identify what is existing in the OCP, where there's weaknesses, what needs strengthening and so forth, instead of we're going to look at a whole bunch of things in the OCP because I know the process, everything that all has to be looked at. And it's going to be exactly the same as what we have right now because we have a pretty darn good OCP in many areas. But to identify actually is what, what is, is the hope to achieve because you recognize now the amount of um, work that is involved here. Would it not be better to get to um, look at the OCP, those that feel that it is inadequate and, and point out different areas that they say that there's a weakness or we could strengthen it or we can improve it and then have that discussion with our planning department, uh, uh, Mr. Russell and so forth and, and ask, is this something that could be corrected easily without a full OCP review, uh, without the costs involved in it? Because if we're just going to get a new OCP review for the sake of getting a new OCP review, um, it's kind of like, <clears throat> If you buy a car 10 years ago type of thing and it's giving you really good service, you don't just in 10 years ago say, well, I'm gonna replace my car in 10 years because it 10 years are up. Maybe in 10 years time, you're gonna say, this car is giving me really good service, but I maybe should change the tires and maybe change the brakes, but I don't have to replace the whole car. And that's what I'm getting at here is I'm, I'm trying to understand what the, the flavor is where our OCP is because I know the process that went in beforehand and I know the people that were on the panels that helped create the OCP where it is who worked very hard and uh, very professionally as well as the dedication and in particular, Mr. Russell and the various consultants we worked on to pull that whole thing together. And it was a huge process. So re recognize that the committee at that time thought that they were covering all bases. They really were, were doing their best effort to, to do um, their best. And they had quite a, quite a good uh, achievement in the process. But at this particular point, I think it's, it's, well, I think it's only fair to our planning department to say, our OCP is good, but it needs improvement here. But, you know, not leave that up to our department to do that, you know, because they've already done all the work before. I mean, for the people that say that we need improvement, I think it would be kind. So that's just my thoughts. It, I, and, and so I guess the question is to our CAO and to director of planning, could 
Could we achieve a lot of what wants to be happened by uh, the goals of some of the, the council members to improve our OCP? Could we achieve that without doing a full on review? Because you just told me that this is like a full project for the whole department for the full year. Could, could, could we achieve the same thing in a lesser amount by just concentrating on the weaknesses there? Before so that, I, if I, I, I'd like to ask a question to planning. If I may, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. So um, the intent of the project that's listed um, with some of the guesstimates on the cost is actually for a review. It would be very unusual to just toss out an entire OCP for the reasons that you mentioned. Um, but uh, depending on the scope of what council identifies as being deficient in this current OCP, um, obviously the scope of that will change the amount of time and the, the budget. So right now um, we basically just have, we. Uh, the planning department has looked at what other OCP reviews are costing, um, where again, you could save money is on the different level of engagement, uh, the different sort of technical items that are being reviewed. Um, the current OCP had a lot of technical changes from the previous one. So all the development permit areas were new. Um, a lot of the land use kind of policies were, were amended because um, they just weren't, they, they were very, um, high level and generic in the previous OCP. Um, and then also a lot of the legislation and things around um, carbon, like GHGs, accessibility um, and hazards, were, they, those were extensively updated for the 2013 plan compared to the one before that, which I forget what year it was. But um, so the intent of the review that was supposed to happen in 2025 was really a review and update, not an overhaul or a brand new OCP that would cost significantly more. Um, and would be, I would say, a longer process. Um, but certainly we would refine that as we get closer to um, when we do the RFP. That's when council would kind of give us that direction. We Honestly, I don't think we have a lot of direction on what's wrong with the current OCP, or at least I don't. Do you? <laughs> no. So we haven't had that conversation yet with this council. Yes, and, and, and thank you for that. And, and the reason I, I wanted to get clarification that it was just a review because there's many uh, comments out in the, uh, the public right now that said, uh, we're getting a full, a brand new OCP. And I thought this is not what the intent was, but the public uh, doesn't understand maybe what's actually going on. So I'm, I'm relieved to know that it is a review and uh, at considerably less expense than a full on OCP. So, so that, that's definitely answered my question. Thank you for that. Councilor Gore. Thank you, Mayor. So just to answer your question, um, perhaps I didn't realize this will be an OCP review deliberation uh, today, but I'll be very happy to dig through the OCP and for the benefit of uh, our planning and, uh, and the staff, uh, we could discuss some of the issues that uh, I've been, I have noticed myself, and also perhaps uh, some feedback uh, sessions, including the public, uh, where, we, where we can actually review some of the sections of the OCP. Um, it was discussed during the uh, the strategic planning that we are not going to overhaul the OCP. So I, I, I was a bit uh, perplexed by by your questioning on what we are doing with the OCP at this time. Uh, but yeah, I'll be very happy to, perhaps we can set up another committee of the whole uh, or, or an informal uh, workshop with the, with the, with the planning and uh, we can go over some of the sections of the OCP that I have, I can flag and uh, we can discuss those. Well, I, and I think that's, that's excellent. I think it would be good for you to do your own review type of thing, get your own information done and do your own research as, as needed type of thing than when Mr. Russell and so forth goes along with the review, then you'll be ready to help them with uh, the community engagement as well as council engagement. That would work out fine. Thank you. Councilor Grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one quick comment on that as I would add is that the, uh, the well, if we go back a slide, we've got the water uh, study aspect. So uh, drinking water, which would precede the OCP review. It may be that we look at the OCP after the drinking water study and say, hey, we're good. And then that part of it is covered off with the OCP review part about whether there's water capacity to meet the demands of the OCP. So that would be the only thing I'd add to that line of thought after, yes. Thank you, uh, good discussion. So um, at the moment on this work plan, 
for this year, we do have background uh, number, where is it? Number 57 is essentially a task to assign the director of community planning to work on background information and drafting the RFP for the full scope of that. Uh, so we can certainly look at a committee of the whole or a discussion to help feed that project a little bit later in the year. So the recommendations um, from us or from me, I guess I will own these um, with, with input from staff, I will say, um, where the council consider the following ideas. And so that would, if council were to go ahead with this type of a plan, we would be deleting in section A, the post COVID patio policy. And so that was something that came about during COVID where um, right now it's a bit of a process to get a, a development permit and approval for a patio. And we bypassed that during COVID. Um, so we've since revisited this and we don't think this is a, a very pressing need. There's only a couple of places that might benefit from it and they can just make an application. So we propose that this one just be taken off and individuals would have to just, if they really wanted one, they have to go through the process we have. The other ones that I'm recommending we take off is the community park, sorry, the Island Health Sharps plan that just doesn't seem to be as critical of an issue. Um, we had some follow up and close out things we could do with Island Health. I just don't see that this council is really pushing for that as a, an issue like the previous council. Uh, the stormwater plan, unfortunately, we didn't get the grant. So we had applied for a significant multi million dollar grant to basically move forward our stormwater planning in the community park. And it was going to be a huge push for engineering and kind of fully allocate their capacity for a couple of years, but we didn't get the money. So I think we should take that one off. The electronic timesheets is my personal dream because I hate signing timesheets every two weeks in paper form. It's very clunky. I just don't think it's an efficient way to do it. And when you multiply that by 100 people, I think we could gain efficiencies, but it's not critical. We're doing fine with what we have right now. So I propose taking that one off. And then Mark's Park, we had a, this is a second phase. So we had a fire in Mark's Park and we had some septed stuff we had to deal with. And there was supposed to be a second phase to make it kind of like an adventure park, like a pass, you know, like um, there's one in Nanaimo that has like things you can jump on and um, whatever. Um, so that would require some design and investment. So I'm suggesting that that's also not as high a priority as it was. So that would require, or if council agreed to that, that would take 700 hours off the plate. And then on the other side, you'll see some things that we were suggesting deferring to 2024, mostly one or two of them might actually push into 2025, but they kind of speak for themselves. Um, if there's anything that council wants to, what I was kind of suggesting is that maybe I'll run through my presentation and then I'll pass it right over to council to go through um, things kind of line by line or like section by section. I've only got a couple more sections here. Um, the other one, so the, the blue, as I mentioned, the blue squares on the side are things that I feel from conversations with this um, council one-on-one -on -one, that they're not necessarily supportive of some of these things moving forward. So that would be another 800 hours if those items came off. And again, they have the blue uh, square on the side. And I've also sort of crossed them off um, in anticipation of you agreeing with me, <laughs> but you don't have to. Um, and then basically we talk about, you know, using the strategic plan so that when you're adding new items to these, we would have a column in the next iteration of this that has your strategic plan objectives identified. So it would have the project in yellow and then another column that says advocacy or recreation or water or something like that so that you could tell. Um, and then we do talk about already, um, we talked about bundling projects for efficiency so that, you know, we would have the water stuff would also um, look at density or population or climate change, like kind of trying to link, that would be our job to do is to interlink those things for efficiency. Um, and then that's it. So then what I'm suggesting now is that you use the rest of the time to refine and talk about some of the th things that you think maybe don't need to be on this list. And when we come back with the new list in six months, that it doesn't have just another hundred new things added in without some kind of discipline, I guess. I don't want to meet, say that in a harsh way, but so that when a counselor is bringing something forward, they feel very strongly that it, it moves your strategic plan forward. And it's not just one of those kind of one-offs, which I think is probably a very challenging thing that you or a situation that you find yourselves in, but hopefully the strategic plan will allow you to kind of explain to people why certain things are being advanced um, or why certain things maybe 
you know, a different take. It might be that you switch it to an advocacy piece or something, but um, we're trying to keep this under control um, for this term, hopefully, and maybe into the next term, but this is kind of where we're at. So I will turn it back to the mayor for- Yeah, thanks, thanks Giva. And, and I, I would hope like in, in the interest of uh, efficiency, if you go back to, to your, your suggestions of the, you know, starting right there, I, I think we, we should give you um, approval on everything here or after discussion, um, so forth. Um, and let's rattle all through this. And then if council wants to look at other items that are on the list that you haven't identified as, as maybe being deferred or deleted, then we can look at that. But let's get this under the way first. Let's get this so, um, is, uh, are you okay with that council? Okay, so so just just moving along here, we would delete the following items. Any have anybody have any problem deleting everything in the left hand column that's already discussed, or any questions about it? I do have one question. I Go ahead. Oh, yeah, this is time for questions and comments. Yes, yes. Uh, I do actually wonder about the electronic timesheets. Uh, I would love to free our CAO up for high level tasks, or you know, bigger, more important tasks than menial ones. Uh, what does this involve? Thank you, if I may, through the mayor. Um, so we all, we have paper timesheets. Um, well, they're on like a, a spreadsheet, but they basically have to get signed off in paper. And so for our outside workers, they have daily timesheets where their tasks are assigned to a particular project that they're working on. So it's, it is a lot of work. And every two weeks, obviously, that has to get processed and, and put into a system manually. And so it's very cumbersome, I think. And it is really it's getting a consultant and getting a program so that we have an electronic system instead of a spreadsheet like people putting it in and then someone have to double like the supervisor has to double check it then we have a person who has to triple check it and then we have to manually do a whole bunch of things that to me for several years it's just been annoying <laughs> so we can get by but we just need time in finance to actually like explore the options um, and a budget obviously to implement a new software program so that everybody would have that it would create a lot of efficiencies moving forward because you could you could see if you have vacation or how much uh overtime somebody might have or they can look and see you know how much sick time somebody has has used already so right now we have to kind of do all of that when i say manually i mean like someone has to input it into a spreadsheet system uh, yeah i mean it seems to me that's like a potential starting domino for all the other things because uh, proper time management software, which I mean, I use in my business and I've researched this extensively before getting my team set up. Uh, I can pull reports now of what projects are taking, how long actually time charges are towards projects. Uh, that seems to be something that would actually help get more stuff done. Um, so what, what is the 70 hours or something? What is the uh, yes, if I may, through the mayor, I think it would definitely um, create a lot of efficiencies, but in the past, we just have not had um, the, the time to do it. So it does require a budget um, and it requires some time. So we could, if this council was able to give us time by allocating projects um, slightly differently than what we have now, then I think it would be, a, for me, it's quite a high priority. I don't know if Jetta agrees. I think the director of finance would agree. Kind of do we have some additional capacity in the finance department now with the new staff member as well that could maybe look at this? Um, through the mayor, we the current um, term position is fully 100% dedicated to asset management. So that, yeah, but it would really be the, the, the director working with um, the team and HR to try and figure out what's the best program for us. There's lots of different options um, out there. This actually came from one that I had worked with before at the provincial level that was just a lot better system. So I think it's really for us to just have enough capacity. So if we're not overloaded with other projects, we would we would want maybe put that one back on for 2024 if council was willing to support us on that. So if I may then through the mayor, I would suggest maybe that council uh, put a little flag on that one so we can see if there's something we can find that we can allow that one to remain on the list if we can take something else off. If I may. Yeah. Sure, yeah. 
that's great. We could we could add that one to the other list on the other side to defer. Thank you. We'll just uh, concur with uh, all my members uh, of council here. So this is just your 70 hours of time are we looking at or other? Sorry. If I may, if I may through the mayor. Uh, so this is the estimate of what it would take um, somebody from finance and somebody from HR to scope out what we would need and do some research. When we implement it, there would be additional time because everyone would have to be trained and we'd have to have IT set everybody up and that would be kind of phase two. So this was really just exploring it. I see. Since it does it not have any cost associated because we don't really know what we want at this time, um, I was hoping maybe the council can defer it to the next budget so we can have some money allocated as well for this. I do have another question, sorry. If I may, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the So through the mayor to CAO, is this at all dovetail with the accounting software upgrades that are budgeted for in this financial plan? Because uh, I mean, I, just from my experience, not at the obviously running municipality, but running a business that uh, time management and payroll are integrated into the accounting software. Is that working now? Yeah, it is, but it's quiet. Okay, I'll speak loudly. Um, so it's not tied in with the updates. We did a trial run on the um, electronic timesheets that do tie into our software and they were a complete disaster. So finance ran those for about 18 months and ours is a pretty straightforward department. It would not have, it didn't handle what we needed in finance. So it certainly wasn't going to be good for other departments that have more complex needs. Um, so we would need another standalone. And so that's part of what we've been looking at as time has permitted. Um, our manager of finance has had a, a demonstration of one other. So we've looked at two and, and just like um, our CAO suggested, it's kind of fitting it in when we've had a, a moment to do a review of it. Um, right now, we can track projects through the payroll system. So we can bring up a project and know how many hours and time is allocated to that. But it's more the review of the timesheet itself that is manual. And um, but as our CAO has indicated, there's all kinds of things that fall out of that. For example, our operations staff, not everybody has a computer. And so there's hardware and, and, and IT costs associated with implementing a lot of these programs. It's possible that our asset management software, if we were to tie in a work order management program, that there may be some, tr some opportunities there, especially for our uh, outside parks and operations staff for tracking their work on various assets. So we're trying to consider all of those things versus just a basic electronic timesheet um, program that could tie in with our systems. So it's complex. We have been trying, like I say, we trialed one that wasn't going to work. What I hear from many other municipal and other kind of public sector bodies is that the difficulty often is with the external staff that are on the ground and not sitting at a desk. It's pretty easy to implement, say, for our staff that's here at PCTC. So we have kind of two needs that we're trying to adopt when we look at these. So again, it really is a matter of capacity and having the time to do the evaluation, but it's, it's also not a simple evaluation. Um, for that. Okay. Thank you. Good discussion. Let, let's move on, folks. We got a lot to do here. Um, okay. So we decided to defer that. So that's good. Um, so, staff, you know, everything in the column except for the electronic timesheets, which moves into the deferment. Okay. Everything else has been deleted. Uh, to carry on with a uh, number on the right hand column. Um, we have snow policy. I have a question right up front on, on that one. Is snow policy to do with the snow removal for the sidewalks? If I may, um, I think, is Belinda here? Yeah. I don't know if you want to. Uh, yes, it's basically our entire snow fight policy. So I'll just let the director of operations speak to that. Thank you. 
So with the snow pipe uh, policy, it's also with our procedures manual that will tie into that. And we've recently gone to some um, MIBC um, courses that have shown that um, with new legislation and some new case law that's come through, we need to bolster up some of our policy expectations as well as what we don't do versus what we do do. So it would be a comprehensive look at the whole piece, including sidewalks, as well as um, our streets, trails and pathways and, and all the pieces that we may or may not be responsible for. The, um, the timeline for this, because it's, it's a massive overhaul to our procedural system as well, um, because a part of the instruction that we were given through insurance is if that we have a set procedures for how we manage it all, that um, reduces the risk mitigation for the city as opposed to a supervisor or a manager making those decisions. It's better if we have it all laid out. So we've already started to work on it and we'll be working on it through 2024 to have it before the 2024 snow season um, ar arrives. And then um, we have gathered some information some, from some previous council meetings about what would the implications be to increase um, sidewalk clearing how much would that be involved? What kind of machinery or staff we would need to do that? So that would all be incorporated in that one piece. Uh, thank you for that, Belinda. Um, that's really disappointing. The, it's just a very re, uh, simple request. Like we're tur turning in, in, into a whole new policy review and yet there's gonna be another study that's going to delay the implementation of service to our, to our people. The, the idea was to get a snow removal equipment for the sidewalks, period. That was it. It's just do it. We know we, get, we need it. We know we have huge accessibility issues out there. And we had huge complaints from the public this year. And we had huge problems with the, the, the freaking walkers and so forth going down the highway. And it's like, why can we not just get a snow removal a piece of equipment for the sidewalk and just do that. And yet you carry on with your policy. If you want to do a big study yet, then that's, that's totally up to you. But in the meantime, we have the manpower, we have the ability and we have money in the budget to get a specific sidewalk removal piece of equipment. And it should be in place and it should be in place for 2023 fall. And then, and, and that's, that's to me like, why, why are we, are we turning into is into just another another huge policy or another review. We know we need it, and why can't we just do it? We the, the situation has been going on as many years as I've been on council. We've had the, the businesses haven't been cleaning the sidewalks and so forth, and we know that that's a fact. But in the meantime, that our public has suffered from it, and this was a, a simple solution. That's my my feeling that it should be implemented right away because we have new accessibility rules and that means that the, the, uh, people of all abilities should have the right to be able to uh, uh, transport down our sidewalks safely, uh, even in, in regards of snow. And uh, we as a city should provide those proper, as much as we're so good at cleaning the roads, we've got a great team cleaning the roads and so forth to get all those automobiles there. But the thing is that we're le le uh, leaving out one very big aspect of our population and those that are not in automobiles. And I think that this is a travesty. And I believe we should look at it sooner. Can I follow up? Sorry? Can I follow up? Absolutely. So, I mean, our snow policy and service levels, that's obviously a big picture item for us to work on. Um, if council would like us to just pull out um, sidewalk cleaning and a new piece of equipment, um, that could certainly be just a motion on its own um, with with, um, um, of course, the budget to put towards that. And I know Kiva, I'm sorry, Kiva wanted to. Yeah, to yes, and, and, and we, we had talked about that before and that's exactly what I thought we were doing already. Um, and the basic being is that, yes, all that we need is we need the piece of equipment and we had this conversation already and it was like, we better get on it soon because of supply chain issues. But it's then when I see that this it got allocated 200 hours, I go like, Really? So if I may provide, I, I think that that would be a better solution and, and, and yes, carry on with the rest of your policy. I yeah. just, 
So just as a bit of background, though, this is this item was on here before any discussion of the snow this year. So as Belinda mentioned, MIA is our insurance provider. And so there is a very large court case in Nelson related to snow about a year, maybe two years ago, that went to the Supreme Court. And so this item is in respect to that. So we have to upgrade our snow policy, we believe, to mitigate us falling into the same kind of problems that the city of Nelson and some other cities engaged. At council, we talked about just when it was snowing, about having a change in the service level for clearing sidewalks. What we would probably do this year is contract it out. So because we don't have um, the specific, like uh, whatever they call them, like little backhoe things, we only have one of those that we could use. And so we would most likely contract it out for priority streets until we're able to review the service level with council. So um, what is in the service level review is usually the priority of the streets, how often they get plowed, um, and other expectations for the community in that um, we might have specific areas identified like around a school or around the clinic or, or things like that. So it's not just um, the sidewalks on a, like I think it was 19A was the discussion that this council had, but we don't have anything in the budget for that. Um, we could certainly let, because um, the director said we can have a motion from council to, to put that in and just get it done this year. We'll figure out how to do it. But this snow policy has been on the books for a bit of time for that reason in, in basically response to the way the case law went is that council has to be the person or the body that sets the service level. So if council decided that we were not going to plow 19A for some reason, and somebody had an accident on 19A, then there is a deferment to council's decision based on your budget and your ability to manage um, resources in your community. But if a, if a supervisor decided, I'm just not gonna get to 19A today, I'm super busy and I had to plow the school, then aren't we, we are liable. So, so the snow policy is based on that update in the legislation. It's not specific to the one area of plowing sidewalks that just came up in conversation um, in the most recent no uh, discussion. So for, for this year, certainly we could in the fall um, assist council with a motion to just make sure that the sidewalks are cleared. Um, tell us which ones and we would basically, I would suggest most likely contract that out because for us to purchase something for a couple of days usually that we have is probably not the best idea, but if it is, we at least would get it taken care of for the next season. And then when we're reviewing the service levels, it would be part of that broader discussion that we might purchase equipment or hire somebody for um, for that different level of service in the long run. Go ahead, Councillor Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate your efforts in uh, addressing the accessibility of the sidewalks. Um, just to clarify, uh, Madam CAO, does this include the bylaw enforcement and compliance, like warnings and, and fines to the public? Okay, thank you. Yeah, if I may, we do already do that, but it, yes, it would. Um, it could look at increased fines or other enforcement options. Um, and it, it's really like looking at the whole big picture. So in terms of, you know, routes, um, equipment, and just setting the expectation level so that everyone who is here could look at, okay, this is why this street isn't getting plowed. Like a lot of people will phone us, um, but they live in a dead end. Like they're never getting plowed. Like we're just waiting for it to melt. Like we can't get to those areas. And so um, this, you know, I, I know there was items that came up during the recent snow, but this was on there before and the scope of it is, is different in terms of mitigating our liability. We do also have the accessibility committee who I expect will make some recommendations and they might be able to give some recommendations on priorities or areas that are most critical for them um, so that we council can use that as part of your uh, motion in the fall as to making sure that certain areas are, are plowed. And it might, I don't know, might even be that we, do the enforcement and then we don't need to do it. But yeah, I think that uh, there's definitely options for the immediate term so that you don't have to wait until we do the full level review. But this scope is not just about that one item. It's, mm. it's a bigger one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I, I disagree. Um, as an ex-purchasing agent, I would rather purchase a specific piece of sidewalk snow removal equipment. It's our equipment. We maintain it in our yard. It's like the very other specific pieces of equipment we yeah, get. We and it is exactly that. that is. I don't know what that is because I don't experience a lot of snow. Yeah, we but, could. But there's a, there's, there's a machine out there. It looks like a big lawnmower. Yeah. And it does whatever it does. And we buy it. We operate it. 
and we operate it with our persons. We don't contract it out to someone else that on a snow day is, is there, there. You can't get them because we don't have enough people anyways to, to do that. So we have our own people do it. And I, I see that uh, when we have our snow fight, that our staff are out there. I don't know. I don't know who they are. I don't like to micromanage. But these people are out there. They're, they're scraping down the curbs on uh, the, the letdowns and so forth. They're out there to try and get the ice out. They're out there. They do a yeah. great job. Yeah. Manually, they're scraping the, the, that. Yeah. Who are those people? That's our operations staff. Right. So we're, those are so the people that should them. be pushing the snow, snow uh, sidewalk, uh, snow removal. Yeah. Don't, whoever those people are. I don't know. So no, we have a limited don't, don't number. Don't tell me why it can't happen. Yeah. We'll tell me how them. it can happen. Yeah, uh, and and then that's it, and and let's let's keep it simple, folks. Yeah, uh, yeah, like get a piece of equipment. We already have the staff. We know it, and they already are doing the, the very specific. And it's hard as hell because when they're trying to get the ice off of the uh, letdowns, it's hard, and they have to chip it away without damaging the concrete. And and, and I know it. It's it's a bear, but if, if we've already had that person go and clean the sidewalks and and. We, we can't tell you, operations knows where the traffic are. It, it's going to be based the same as what you do in traffic. It's going to where the traffic is, those are the sidewalks that should be done first. You have your A list, the B list, the C list and D list. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You already, and you, you uh, establish traffic needs. It's as simple as that folks. I'm just, I'm just saying, and then I understand everything else you have to do for the insurance and so forth. Yes, I agree. But I really believe that we need to put this in place now. Let's get, we, we talked an awful lot about the, the efficiencies of the left, electronic timesheets that are going to make, make our staff great. And I think that's great. But at the same time, the people that are paying taxes should have some services provided for them as well that, that, uh, that have that much dedication and they should be able to get out to those appointments safely. Uh, and if it's just get a snowplow and do it, that's what I want. If you need a motion, fine. I would, I would look for support from the rest of the council, but um, otherwise that's the best I can come up with. Councilor Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't know what the strict, most strict bylaw and enforcement is on snow removal, but have we looked at that and do we have that already? Um, if I Thank may you. through the mayor, yes, we do. So our, we have a policy or a bylaw that says you're responsible for clearing the snow in front of your sidewalk but it's within a certain time from when it stops snowing. So I, off the top of my head, I can't remember. I think it's 24 hours after it stops snowing. Um, and so we do like, we got basically operate on a complaints basis. And so we actually had a couple of complaints from some counselors the last time. And so bylaw goes out, tells the people, reminds them. We have um, a lot of social media and communications that goes out and reminds people. Um, some people will do it when we remind them, uh, some people for whatever reason are unable to do that. And so, um, you know, we could certainly figure out what a priority might look like. We don't actually have staff that, um, we have a limited number of staff that are trained on snow fights. So we would look into that. We just don't have direction from council to do it, but we can work to get that in the fall. If the accessibility committee wants to weigh in on that, um, we could put that up before them at one of their upcoming meetings and easily have a motion for an immediate solution. It might be contracting out, it might be purchasing, it might be, we might have to hire another person, but we can figure that out. I think what I'm seeing though, is there's a bit of confusion about what this item is on the list and what council has mentioned, but we don't have specific budget or direction for. So this one, I think as a standalone kind of bigger thing, it's like the entire system, but if council wants to, as we've mentioned, if you wanna pull out a certain specific service level and increase it, we just need a motion to do that or a resolution, I guess, not just the motion. Thank you. Thank you. I think um, good, good discussion. I, I'd like to treat um, uh, 14 as a, a totally separate issue to de de defer it as, as you've already suggested. Okay. Fine. Uh, but in the same time, I'd like to put through a motion anyways, that staff immediately, um, uh, do whatever means necessary to get the proper snow removal equipment for sidewalks, suitable for sidewalks, and make the necessary uh, staffing arrangements to happen for um, starting uh, fall of uh, 2023. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Gore. 
and discuss discussion you um i i'm the one that's moving this um you already know my feelings on it Councillor gore do you have anything further uh for the questions uh Councillor wood thank you uh does this mean we would repeal our existing sidewalk clearing bylaw as well and enforcement or no well, I think we should no. wait for that. Okay. Just do this as if I may as a standalone. So, so, yeah. And yeah. we'll do that. That's what we'll be deferring till 2024. Sure. Thank you. I, I, exactly. And, and, and to um, the CAO's explanation of, I can tell you the, the bylaw compliance and so forth that, that happens. Many, many um, businesses that have very large frontages would rather pay a fine to bylaw for not complying than to pay the $500 or, or more to have a private contractor come and do the sidewalk. So it's like, if I get caught, then hey, I still saved 300 bucks. But in the meantime, the sidewalk, bylaw compliance doesn't clear the sidewalk. And it, 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 you would think it would be initiative, but it's not enough, just for the question. Thank you. Uh, I, I question, uh, Councillor Beal. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a topic, you know, this is a topic that, uh, <laughs> brings out lots of feelings, obviously. Um, and it is a, a huge um, concern for people when the snow falls and falls and falls and the sidewalks aren't cleared on the main roads, such as 19A and perhaps Alberta Highway. Uh, I would hope that in addition to bylaw having uh, bylaw officers having the um, options of enforcement and fines, I, I do hope that there's some real consideration to also having a proactive, positive approach. I find that gratitude and being thankful, showing appreciation, and also education can go a long way. I know that I myself, having been frustrated in the past and previous years, not just one year, with the lack of snow removal along 19A, I have walked along and you can actually walk a long ways in the city um, in a fairly short period of time and go in and out of every single business to remind people who haven't uh, shoveled that they need to do it and to thank the people who did that they uh, did do it. And those who received the gratitude and thanks were very, very appreciative. And in fact, in some cases went out and then helped their neighbors clear their commercial properties as well. I also found when I spoke with business owners that many of them really did not understand that they were responsible for the sidewalk area, given the fact that the city has taken over maintaining many of the landscape beds that border 19A, they seem to think that um, that that also included looking after the sidewalk. They were not necessarily the owners of the property, but they were the owners or managers or employees of the business. So there's still a lot of education to be done. And I honestly think that the nicest way to do that and to build engagement with our community is a personal approach. And I think that once that's done, it can go a long way to, um, uh, to fixing things in the future. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Grants. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess maybe a question through to our CAO. Would this be then considered a new service level uh, if we're now committing to clearing sidewalks in addition to roadways? And follow up related question is, uh, I, I sense a concern around potential liability around taking on uh, the city committing to do a certain thing and maybe not being able to follow through on that, which would open the city up to a lot of liability in that case. If I may, through the mayor, uh, yes, this this definitely would be um, an increase in the service level than what we currently are able to achieve. And I think what we are cautious about is it has to be council direction. So what we would do um, in preparation for the fall, we would probably come back with another uh, motion for council that lays out what we're able to achieve and have you endorse it. Because if we do it at the staff level, that increases our liability. But if we bring the plan to council and council makes the decision as the kind of um, executive of the city that will actually mitigate that. So we would have to basically go away with a plan. I expect we would talk to the accessibility committee um, to get a sense of the streets and we would probably list them or list all the parameters and have you endorse it in the fall. Follow up if I may. Um, so since we're in the middle of work plan, this is currently not on the work plan. So if I'm, 
if I may, through the mayor. So the, the overall snow policy is on the work plan for this year, but we just won't be able to get to it, I don't think. Plus we have the accessibility committee meeting, which um, we didn't know at the beginning of last year that that was gonna happen. So it was one of the items we recommended deferring to 2024, but what I'm hearing is that this council wants to single out or pull out the sidewalk piece and not wait until we look at the overall um, policy. So what we will still be doing if this is deferred, as mentioned on this work plan, we would be looking at our overall snow policy, having it all approved by council in terms of like how quickly we can get to things and the priority routes and basically everything that we do as part of our snow fight. But we would advance that one piece that you're talking about in terms of sidewalk. So we still need time to look at our overall policy um, and have what we think will reduce the liability there. So have council establish that service level um, and we would roll this piece in. Um, so we're kind of just pulling this out and doing it first, I guess, not in consideration of everything else. So this is kind of deferred partially, I guess. <laughs> Councillor Gordon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thanks for the clarification, CAO. So what I, I'm understanding and perhaps Mayor, you can clarify is we are not, actually increasing the service levels is just a new piece of equipment that we are purchasing and are we taking on more sidewalks than we usually clear if i may um we really don't clear sidewalks except for around city hall sometimes we will try if we can to clear other sidewalks on priority areas like a, like if we know there's a seniors home across the street or something but that's just like voluntary basically so we only clear again, because we're focusing on clearing the roads for safety right now. And so we don't have the piece of equipment or the staff for that. So that is a change in the service level. So if we were expected to have new equipment and staff to say, do just 19A, that's an increase in the service level of what we have right now. Because right now we kind of defer to the owners. That's their responsibility through our bylaw. So we've kind of in a way passed that to them. So, Mayor, if I may, yeah, is, is your intent to get a specific sidewalk cleared or like Councillor Grenz was mentioning, is the city taking on clearing all the sidewalks with this now fancy equipment that we will likely have in the future? Uh, I, I totally understand. And that's why I seconded your, your motion. I respect the need for accessibility and all those. So would there be a further direction, I guess, from, uh, from the CAO in the, in the snow season? to identify those areas uh, for prioritizing those areas for snow snow clearance. Absolutely, Councilor Gore, the idea is like, it's certainly not council's mandate to micromanage on, on, on how, how they determine which sidewalks are done and which not. The idea is that the, uh, the staff uh, base, it would be simply put, it would be based on traffic, pedestrian traffic. What pedestrian traffic areas need to be plowed what sidewalks need to be plowed based on the most amount of pedestrian traffic. Uh, we would still obviously encourage businesses to, to clear. There are some businesses that do, you know, uh, to actually clear their snow. They would continue to do so. Uh, but at the same time, those that uh, were not cleared, that were in a high traffic area would be cleared by our staff. And to answer your question, the, the, we already have existing staff that do a lot of manual, as I say, the chipping and so forth, that go down and then do the the the, uh, the the sidewalk letdowns. I saw them in Memorial Plaza, and they push around the little snow removal or the little ice ice removal so that ice doesn't form and so forth. And they they we already have those people doing that. So that is exactly who who and what would be doing that. If I may, Mayor. I I'm just a little cautious here. Like, are we going to set a precedent for this snow season and then we revise our, our policy next, next year? Would it be creating confusion for the business owners or residents? Like, oh, I thought this, the city was supposed to clear it. They did it last year. Why are they not doing it this year now that they have a new policy in place? Um, CAO, can you, can you clarify that we are able to achieve what the mayor's goal is here and at the same time, have the public do their part in, in clearing the snows and the sidewalks, which I, I hope still the policy stays the same on that. So if I may, through the mayor. So basically what we do right now, I just got clarification is um, we have priority sidewalk areas that we clear. So like I mentioned, city hall, the fire hall, 
uh, community park walkway and the area where the kids sled. Um, and then we try, if we still, if we have time and it's still snowing, we try to do other city facilities. So Foster Park, Springwood. That's our priority right now. We do not clear public sidewalks because the expectation is that the businesses and property owners are responsible for that. So it would be an increase in the service level to, high, we'd have to train, we, we don't actually have extra staff, like they're doing those things. So we'd either have to stop doing some of that and or hire somebody temporarily or figure something out. Um, we can sometimes have priority contracts with people so that we get the, like, they're gonna be really busy, but we kind of secure them first. Um, and then basically what we would do is long-term, it probably makes sense that we would acquire the equipment, um, but we would want to consult with, I think the accessibility committee at the very least in terms of the priorities, which we can do without a council direction. Um, and then we would look at, you know, what we know of the city and where other people tend to, to be walking. But right now we don't do public sidewalks really at all. The odd time, like you mentioned, or I think you and I had talked, we did, we do send, like I was actually, I think the bylaw staff that assisted in some cases. So um, everybody who, we don't have dedicated snow fight people because it really snows only a couple of times, if even. Um, so it's our other staff that get redeployed to do that. And we have a group of them that are trained and obviously, you know, the equipment is different than like driving the snow plow and all that. There's rules around that. So, I mean, I guess it could be confusing if council changed, like if you didn't want to continue, if you only wanted to do the um, sidewalks this year, um, it definitely, that could be confusing, but I think if you're wanting to do it, you're going to want to do it always. Like, I don't think you can go back and forth. Right. So we wouldn't be doing every, like, it's really probably going to, going to just be the, like, Alberni and Highway 19, realistically. Like, we're not going to, have, unless you want to hire loads more people. <laughs> I think it's going to just be those priority areas that we're going to be able to provide anything for. Yeah, yes, and, and, and to clarify with that as well. It, it's going to be very low labor. It's going to be because we don't get that much snow. But when it's needed, it's needed. But if you were to take it for how many hours as compared to a full-time position, it would be minor hours total when you think of one person on a, and a snow removal equipment. Uh, I, I don't even want to guess what that would be uh, with, with our snowballs. When it's needed, it's needed now. And then this is kind of like, what do the parks department do when they're not planting flowers and weeding type of thing? Well, you know, this is what they're doing. So what, what, whatever this person is that does snow, no <laughs> sidewalk snow removal. Obviously, he's a person that does something else and then is redeployed for this in a snow event. Your job is to do this. And then when the snow event is over, you go back to doing what you're going to do. Yes. Well, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the motion. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Whatever. Um, if I may, yes, the intent would be to defer it to 2024, the planning and the background work, I believe soon council will be even talking about some of that, um, would still continue. It's just a recognition of the fact that we don't think we'll be spending the money to build the trail this year. Thank you, Mayor. So this is about number 60, the tree management bylaw review. Um, just to clarify, are we looking at 
a new tree protection bylaw, is that what it is? And um, would you need a, a council direction on what that bylaw could look like in the future? Um, okay. Um, is there a reason why we, the staff thinks that it should be done after the UFS and not this year? In case we do have a bylaw, could that not be, like in case we have a bylaw now, could that be incorporated into the UFS? Why the deferral is my question, sir. Um, if I may, through the mayor. So this is really because um, they they feed into each other. So we want to see what the results of, there's extensive public consultation um, and then expert review of the um, urban forest strategy. And so one of the implementation pieces of that that we see is reviewing our tree protection bylaw. And so that would look at, um, you know, like in the past, we've had a tree protection bylaw that exempted properties, residential properties that were below a thousand square meters. That got changed um, because of the community love of trees, I guess, or the community um, just wasn't happy with that level. And so we want to wait. What staff is proposing is that we want to wait and see what the results of the urban forest strategy are. And then that would give council time to look at all of the specifics that you want us to, to change that bylaw. It could, it was, it's really the, the whole thing. So like fines, definitions, um, potential exemptions, um, application of the bylaw, like in certain cases, the, the bylaw doesn't really apply if there's a development permit. So things of that nature, it's, it's really just looking at the uh, principles and objectives of the strategy and making sure that they're implemented by bylaw. And so we're looking to present that information at the end of this year to council, like in the fall. Um, so that would feed into this being a 2024 project. Please say yeah. Right. Review, okay, so section B. I don't know, number five, like I, it says review and provide direction, but I, on my handle that I got here, affordable is crossed off. So okay. is that already crossed off or do we have to cross it off now? Yeah, so if I may, this is staff. So this was a item that I thought um, council might want to delete, but I don't wanna guide you either way. So these ones were motions from previous councils okay. that are kind of legacy motions. And from talking to some councillors individually or even to the mayor, I know that there is, is not as much support for some of them, like, like this one and the other, the, the PCTC parking lot. So I've suggested that these just be reviewed and discussed by this council and you can delete them, defer them, or leave them as is. Right. Thank you. Uh, okay, so now this clarification. So what, there you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I, I, suggest that we delete all six at this time. Councillor Gordon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'm sorry? No. Oh, no, no, I was just, just suggesting it, but it, it, uh, open for questions, yes. Sorry, I would like to keep the number 28 and further explore this option if the council thinks that's appropriate at this time. So are, are you're suggesting keep 28, the Alberta, do you know which property that is up by the train station? There's no services there. There's, no, there's absolutely no services there. There's no water, there's no sewer, but you, you want, well, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, do you know what you actually want to maintain? So, so you still want to maintain it that to have staff, um, Sure. Well, yeah. The the, the only um, suggestion, Councillor Gorey, it, it was put on there as an idea from previous council that you know they'd go into a partnership, you know, for co-op or something like that up there. But recognizing the first any co-op that looks at the property, if they have to pay the services to get up there, it's millions of dollars to get there. So. It's it's all nice to uh, say to, we're going to have partners with a piece of land, but you got to come up with millions. So um, that's it's it's not viable. Is all I'm, I'm saying at this particular time. 
it's viable if and when there's, uh, I guess, development on the other side of the, that property. Yeah. Would pay for the services to get all the way out there, then that would be um, obviously really? ready to look at. But I'm just under, understand how how that would happen. How, how in your mind do you think that that's a viability? No, thank you, Mayor. I was uh, I was wondering if that not being viable is that like a staff report that came? It's not viable, or is it uh, no? Okay. If if I may, through the mayor, Go ahead. Uh, this was a motion from previous council, as mentioned, and we staff did reach out to the Canadian Co-op Society was the direction, and we did not hear back from them at that time. So we have not done anything further on that. So, so I'm just suggesting that this isn't worthy of having and dedicating any more staff time. Councilor Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think we just want to make sure that we are definitely for pro for co-op housing. It's just that this piece of land isn't necessarily ready just yet. And so um, it probably saves us um, some some time if we if we take it off the list for now. Um, but I think uh, Councilor Gorgeous wants to make it clear that we are definitely would love to have more co-op housing uh, in the city, uh, but we need a partner for it and the land has to be ready for it to entice that partner. So we're just not there yet. Thank you. John, Sir Bill. Yeah, <clears throat> pardon me. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I would like to just add that, um, you know, I don't mind taking this off a list, uh, but with the understanding that this could be revisited at any time that it seemed feasible to move ahead. I would also like to add that I am aware that right now, hopefully in the future as well, the federal government is actually offering money to um, provide the hookups and various things. That's one of the things that they can cover is the DCCs. Um, so that um, housing can go ahead. So it's not for the housing itself, but it is for various services, studies, et cetera, ahead of getting land ready. So I'm not saying that this would, actually this probably would fit with that, although there are other hoops that one needs to go through, but their rapid housing initiative, I think it's called right now, actually will cover things like hook up for water and bringing water and, and other services to a property. So I just also like to keep it in, in the, oh, let's say at the very least on the back burner, that if things come to the forefront so that we can move on this. And if there is another co-op partnership that's interested in looking at this, that um, I'd be, I would want to have us uh, be open to that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Grants. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hopefully a very quick question on number 55. Is it possible for us to address, through the staff, <laughs> uh, possible for us to address maybe some of this uh, direct, like in, with planning when they speak to anyone coming in with a proposal and then again at the council table so it doesn't require any kind of specific staff direction or? If I may, through the mayor? Yes. Um, absolutely. So council has 100% discretion on what you accept as a community amenity. Okay, so I'm hearing no further questions. Are we okay to delete all of them or would you like to have a vote on? Councillor Gore, you're the only one that had the- I'll move then that we delete these or you move bring a motion. Them. Yeah, to move yes. to delete these. Okay, any further discussion? All the question to delete all of them? Sorry, I, Councillor Beale, I couldn't see your hand up there. It, it, is that in favor of deleting it all, Councillor Beale? Yes, I'm afraid you faded in and out there, so it was hard to tell other than the question. I didn't hear the other bit. So you did call for all those in favor. I agree. Yeah, I, you're right. I'm doing a lot of fading in and out lately. However... All those in favor? Thank you. The passage unanimous. You have another slide for us, Council or CAO? Okay. So 
Sorry. Um, all, no, I was going to say, uh, Councillor, uh, this is um, Council. This is all to do with um, the um, predetermined slides of deferring uh, this with the intent of getting this manageable, this work plan more manageable. I would suggest while we're here at the table, if you would have a quick perusal through it, uh, we're here, we're right now type of thing, and have a look and seriously suggest or bring up for discussion right now anything. And I believe that as per our CAO, she's identified two is already done. But if you look at the items on page three, is there anything else that jumps out of your mind that you would like to revisit, to defer, or um, have further comment on? Councillor Gorn. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to clarify. I know we discussed about the co-op housing and uh, from the information I did get from uh, Councillor Beal, I was wondering if the, the council would be willing to consider this as a, a deferral for like without putting a timeline on it. So in case we do get those partnerships with the feds, CMHC or whatever, uh, if we would, could still pursue that in the future. We, you, we already just voted to delete it, but at okay. the same time, re remember it's a total council discretion, Councillor Gore. It, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, through the mayor, we have a policy in our OCP currently that we are willing to explore partnerships for affordable housing that would uh, donate, consider donation of city land. Can we, um, CAO Taylor, can we remove number 16, page three, just delete it? If I made the the wounded warrior one, that's complete. It was defeated already. Yeah, previous or, or or has it already been? That's already been done. So, so the leader, so I can cross that off. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to save ink. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. If I may, uh, on number eighteen, maybe that's one to defer. That one's done. Um, if I may, I'm bringing that one forward in June. Twenty-two is already done, right, Councillor Wood? Complete. Yeah. Okay, I see it's complete. Okay, cross up. Yeah, twenty-one hours, apparently. Yeah. You better get elected, Councillor Gore. So, just a point of clarification, uh, CAO UBCM grant application for EMO thirty thousand is that. Our expense, 30,000? If I may, through the mayor, uh, that's the grant amount that we applied for. And that report already came to council, it's already done. So we've already submitted the application and I believe there'll be some information coming to council shortly on our success with that. Okay, and thank you. And then uh, for council's benefit, number 23 on page three, review benefit plans for council members. Um, that was um, already brought forth uh, when I was away. Uh, anyways, it was defeated at the time. Um, it was surprised me, um, but anyhow, it was defeated. Uh, then we were advised that it was too late to go to UBCM to ask for um, uh, renewal because the time limit had passed when I was at the ABICC. The individual told me that if you have a minimum of three people that will apply, that they will extend that um, forward. Um, I was thinking about bringing that through for reconsideration of council uh, to re-vote on it again uh, for the, um, the amenity package or, or the benefit package as was presented. Uh, it was uh, a 3-3 three, three vote at the time anyways. Uh, I was absent. I would have voted in favor. Um, I thought it was a slam dunk or else I would have actually came in from Maui on it. But regardless, it didn't happen. Um, I would have to ask for re consideration of those that voted uh, to take it out, uh, which would be Councillor Grants, Councillor uh, Gower, uh, and Fraz, Fraz. Um, to reconsider it. Um, I would ask for that reconsideration, but if you're just going to turn it down again, um, uh, there's no, I, I'm just being absolutely frank here. 
if you're just going to turn it down to the end, then don't don't waste our time. But I think it's uh, uh, an opportunity to provide benefits to those people that actually did vote for it, which was Councillor uh, Beal, uh, Councillor uh, Wood, and Councillor Martin, who voted for it. Obviously, they felt that it was a good program. But if you don't feel it is, then I I I, I have no appetite to just bring it back to the table, just to have it defeated again. So I'm I'm looking to your guidance to say, would you do a consideration in favor of uh, passing this or not? Thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate uh, you discussing this. Um, at the time, yes, I did vote against it, and we discussed this. Actually, it was, it was quite a bit of discussion that the council had on this. And I was not really expecting to have this read deliberated here. Um, I am not, sorry, I'm not in favor of uh, reconsidering it at this time. Um, I don't know where Councillor Gens uh, stands on this, but. Uh, I, I, it's not fresh in my memory what, what exactly the parameters were. I mean, I'm always happy to discuss things again, um, but mindful of, yeah, I'm happy to chat with you too, uh, the mayor, if there's uh, details that can be brought back to my front of my memory on it. So happy to look at that for sure. I would be happy to chat for further sidebar with you after the meeting at any time. That would be fine. Thank you. This, I, I, if we're going to cross it off the list, you know, now's the time to do it. So we'll leave that for now. I wonder if I may, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, this is the time. Yeah. Great. Um, so there are a few here that I maybe just have a few questions about. Um, one is maybe 26 banner expansion project, perhaps could be something to defer given the workload in the department. Uh, I also have questions about 24, whether that might be something the technology is rapidly changing in terms of managing information. Uh, we could be a year out from having an AI just tell us what a document says, which we can do right now, actually. It's been changing week by week. So I wonder if maybe that, before we really commit to any kind of new software, whether it might be worth deferring on that. Um, if I may, through the mayor. Yes, go ahead. Um, so this the number 24, if I start with that one, um, this is our basically our background research on sort of categorizing our documents and prioritizing retention and looking at kind of what we have and what we need to keep and how we should track that. So we're not looking at the software or the implementation yet. That is another project that's already identified for 2024. Um, and what was the other one you had there? Sorry. Uh, 26 was just approved by council recently. That's the permanent metal banners, but Certainly, um, I think if that one went into 2024, that wouldn't be a problem for us. But I, I believe that a lot of the work, background work has been done. <laughs> I think it's underway. It might be more expensive if we defer it, <laughs> maybe. Everybody doing your speed reading here? Uh, Councillor Beal, thanks, Amanda. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, picking up where Councillor Grenz mentioned the banner expansion project, I too wonder, I think that deferring it is, you know, maybe short-sighted. I, I think that it will be a real plus, uh, you know, around the building, but also it is, you know, connected to the downtown area. And also, I think that costs of these things just go up uh, if we leave them any longer. It seems that a lot of work's already gone into this, and it will be a really nice, positive uh, visual addition to the building. So I'd like to keep it. And, and uh, I would like to, yeah, thank you, Councillor Beal. I would like to echo your comments exactly. I think there's, there's been an awful lot of work, study gone into it already, and I think it was a great program. And I've so, certainly support this carrying on. 
uh, number seven, page five, DCC review. Um, this is going to carry it on and carry it on and so forth. It's still looking for 500 hours of time. Um, it's been delayed. I would just like to defer it again, uh, defer that until um, 2024. Is there a seconder for that? So, good. Yeah, Councillor Wood, and then yes, seconded. Uh, comment up. My my reason is that the DCC review and so forth is it's a major it's a major project to do and so forth. Um, our, our DCCs are healthy right now. We're in the sweet spot. We know that we're having uh, the development uh, going on, and we're collecting lots of DCC revenue from it. And in this particular time, um, if it's not broke, um, don't try fixing it. Uh, and we, you know the staff could be um, better utilized by doing something else, in my opinion. Councilor Gore or Councilor Wood, do you have any comment for us? You second, okay. Councilor Gore. Thank you, Mayor. Point of clarification from CAO again. Isn't this a legislative requirement to have the DCCs revised every five years? And are we not required to do this in? now whenever it's slated 2024 um if i may i think it is important i'll have to defer to the director of finance on whether it's a hard and fast five years but um we usually would want to review it regularly um as the mayor mentioned for the rates which i think we're probably okay on but also for the dcc approved projects so what we would do when we review it is we assign um what we're going to spend the money on so the bylaw has to specify what projects are eligible for dcc funding and we're getting to the end of that project list. Uh, the Raft Trevor one is on there right now, but we would want to do it next year, I think, so that we get the new list of where the expenditures would go. So if I may, again, to, to you two, Mayor, yourself. Um, so it's already slated for 24. Like, what's the deferral for again? Sorry. Can you clarify? Like, it's already slated for 24? Are yeah. you... So, so, do, so what's the deferral? Like, are you moving it even further one year? To defer the review of the DCCs until 2024. So it's already projects identified for 2024. Sorry. Okay, so to, so then to to it's already been deferred to 24. It's already here. Okay, yeah, 2024, 2025. Sorry, if I may, it was originally supposed to be for this year, but we deferred it, um, I think, at the last conversation. Sure. Right. So, okay, so, so then let's define that to 2025 then. Okay. Does, does the motion still stand as it was? Well, um, yeah, are you okay to amend the motion to 2025, Councillor Wood? Thank you. Sorry, I thought it was to 2025. Yeah. That's fine. All those in favor? That carries. Thank you. Are you going to ask opposed, please? Sorry. Are you going to ask for the opposed? Oh, yes, I guess if you don't vote, sure. So, all those in favor? All those opposed? Those opposed are Councillor Beal and Councillor Gar. Thank you. See nothing else on the list that I feel that we can actually go ahead, Councillor Grants. Just to point a clarification on uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, they do say it depends on council direction, but they're crossed off. So could you clarify, please, through the CAO? Thank you. I believe what, you're covered section that? B. Yeah. Um, so if I may, through the mayor, uh, those have been moved to 2024. So that's the pool. Um, you can see there wasn't workload assigned to them because we didn't really know what council was looking at, but we've moved those items into 2024. And realistically, I believe that would be more of a regional um, collaboration if that's to move forward. Uh, I guess maybe one more on page five. Oh, that's already for 24, 25 is the mail-in ballot item one. So that's already in 
Yeah, future. Okay, great. Okay, Councillor Gore. Thank you. Sorry, I'm eating into our lunch uh, break here. Sorry. Uh, quickly into the, the mail-in ballot. Could it be even deferred to 2026 since we don't have elections until then? If I may, if I may through the mayor. Yes. Um, we would probably recommend doing it a little bit sooner because we want to make sure there's a lot of education around it and a lot of um, time for pe people to plan. And while I hope it doesn't happen, we could also have referendum um, things happen before the election. So we just want to be prepared and have that available. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Going three times. The list has been reviewed. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Beal. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, earlier I had hoped, hoped to <laughs> just ask a question and uh, particularly that, you know, projects that are identified for 2024 and 2025, uh, you know, I just wasn't sure what the point was in doing further deferral at this time and that there is time ahead. We're going to be looking at this again in the coming year, looking at the budget and I imagine reviewing and reassessing, you know, where we're at, what needs to change. And so I wasn't sure how much um, I just questioned the urgency or the need to actually look at any further deferment of those items. That's all. Thank you. Uh... Including remarks, the AO. Um, thank you, uh, through the mayor. Um, so, if there are other items um, that come up that you think you won't, you can remove. Uh, council can do a motion in subsequent meetings. Um, and I think the reason, perhaps, just to touch a little bit on why we've got the multi-year list, is I think it's helpful for both council and staff to look at what's coming because 2024 will be here very soon, which is scary, but it will. Um, and so these items definitely don't reflect everything that would happen in 2024 or 2025, but they're items that have been moved down the list. So we will be bringing this list back usually every six months to council if needed, um, sometimes maybe a little bit longer, but we, we want this to be um, like an ongoing kind of checklist of where we're at. And council might remember, we sometimes bring the percent complete so that you know during budget time, you kind of know where we're at with certain things. So I think there's some value for having the ones you already think you want to do in 2024 established so that when you're adding new items that will now cross into 2024, you know what's already like we're already kind of at like two thirds full, I guess, in terms of our capacity. Um, so there's about another third of, of things that we could add in because um, we will start talking about that in the fall um, for 2024. And what we would encourage Council is to look at multi year planning so that we have a five year financial plan and it is helpful sometimes to put placeholders in the later years so that everybody understands what your plans are moving forward. Um, and then just to kind of, this is probably one of your first committees of the whole, I think. Um, so everything that was passed today in committee of the whole, we will rise and report to council later on this afternoon. And um, Sarah and staff have been tracking what, you're, what you were talking about so that we would actually endorse that at the council meeting and then we're finished on that item for now. Supporting it. That's it. That's great. Well, hopefully, um, you know, the, uh, the council has given staff direction anyways to try and get this to more of a manageable uh, place. And so you know direction anyways, and we can focus on um, what's, what's needed to be done and what can be done, not just what's expected to be done, but actually the staff have the ability to do that. So thank you for uh, your, your patience, staff, for uh, us getting through that. But uh, uh, it's something we have to work through. I'd like to get a mover and a seconder for adjournment at this time. Uh, Councillor Wood. Councillor, uh, moved by Councillor Wood, seconded by Councillor Gore. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you.